Let's go, dude! We knew this was gonna happen. These guys are playing to win. It's a 48 minute football game. We trained all year for this stuff. St. Ignatius caught for the touchdown. Hand off to Latai Mua. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Sarah. If you guys wanna win this game, you're gonna have to take it from SI. Because right now they want it more than you. They need it more than you. They need this game. We're gonna play ball. They gave us everything we know. All I gotta do is execute. <laughs> One twenty in the game. Lampkin throwing left to the end zone. Touchdown, Terrence Laville. And Sarah is with an extra point of tying the game. What a drive by the Padres. 14 plays, 97 yards, and they're within one. This for the tie. Good snap, good hold, and they ran into the kicker. Damon Lewis goes down, that's gonna be a penalty. So the Padres are going for it here. And this has been a great football game. So here we go. Sarah for the win. Here's the snap. Hand off to Sanchez. defense for the Padres, which brings us to our game changer of the week highlight, Jackson Latamua. Jackson committed to Washington State just this past week, two days after his brilliant performance against Valley Christian. Three big tackles, one was a sack, another was a tackle for loss. Latamua also had four pass breakups against the Warriors Division I receiving core. Oh yeah, he also scored the only touchdown of the game. Can you explain everything that this game meant to you? Uh, this game means so much, especially since it's Poly Day. Uh, you know, a lot of alumni coming back for this. They started this a while ago. Um, my brother came here. I already knew how big this game was coming in, especially being like for the banner, uh, especially losing Dalen last week. We just had, a, we knew we had to, we had a lot of shoes to fill, and we just came in with the game plan. One thing I see in you uh, on the defensive side of the ball is just that savage mentality. You know what I mean? You getting in the ball and you getting in the plays and coming out, you know what I mean, celebrating. Can you speak to what it takes to build something like that as a defensive player? Uh, man, I just, it's confidence. Uh, I might be quite off the field enough, but when I come out here, I just turn off a different me. I just love the excitement of the big hits, the picks, pass deflections. Just knowing I can, I'm trying to, like, my job on defense is to get the offense back on the field so they can score, help us win. So the stage is set for the WCAL season finale. The Sarah Padres are looking to make history to be the first team in school history to finish 10-0 and in a regular season. energy flowing around the stadium right now I can feel it so there's two ways you can take your energy you can take it to the positive or you can take it to the negative negative. and in our world the two energy forces that we tap into are either love or hate and we're not playing this game because we hate SI we're playing this game because we love each other that's why we're playing this game today that is why we exist today we exist because we love each other and we love the journey we've been on long, 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 260 days ago. Can you feel sad? Pray for us. Pray for us. Pray for us. Let's go, baby. You don't finish off a journey with hatred in your heart. You finish off your journey with love in your heart and you cross the finish line because you're doing it for other people. Stay in that mindset all day today. Keep your eyes up. Stay focused. If you hate someone, you're going to clip some guy in the back and cost us 15. If you hate someone, you're going to push some guy back and get us a personal foul. Don't let that emotion come in there. Love is much stronger than hate. Trust me, it's way stronger than hate. It always overcomes. We're back at J.B. Murphy Stadium on the campus of St. Ignatius in San Francisco. SI holding a 14-7 lead thanks to the defense, which got a turnover as Sarah was about to score on their first drive. QB Teddy Buchanan orchestrated an 11-play, 96-yard touchdown drive for the first score of the game. Buchanan connected with Danny Ryan twice in the first half. Sarah finally scored mid-third with Jackson Lontai Mua's one-yard run to the right side on second and goal. 
Good news for Sarah, the defense is adjusted to stopping the Wildcats. And QB Dominique Lampkin starting to warm up in his position. They're moving the ball. St. Ignatius and Sarah's rivalry has been alive since the 1920s. It's 14-14, we're on the road. It's, you know, it, it's been a painful, it's been hard to get 10 yards. I think we had a good game plan to begin with. I don't know, maybe it was just a momentum issue. Cause I, cause I don't know, maybe, cause you know, our special teams, you know, first game of the play of the game, you know, get possession, we went crazy on special teams, but after that, I don't know, maybe our heads were in the game because it's usually always, you know, oh, it's SI. Oh, they're not good, you know. They, they're not, they ain't anything. So maybe maybe a little bit of over cockiness in that one occasion. We went into SI 9 0. Um, we were about to be the very, very first team in Sarah history to ever go 10 0, and our egos were high. After we beat Valley, I could see the focus was. Um, there as much. The focus and direction and, and purpose of the team changed from everything we had been to get us to where we were and turned into something else, which we had to fight every single play against a team that was highly motivated, highly prepared, well coached, on the road, week 10. We're already league champs. They're not. Ton of talent. One of the most talented SI teams they've ever had. And they played like it. Just crazy stuff. Coach Walsh would always say you can't do football math in WCAO. Any given team on any given Saturday or Friday can win that game. So since we said, oh, we beat Valley Christian, and Valley Christian beat SI, we could beat SI. And we kind of had that, a little bit of that in the back of our heads. We are the same defense that shut Valley Christian out. If you get out here in the second half, that's on you guys. That's on all of you, the entire group. If you get out hit by SI, that's something you got to live with. Backers, like Coach said, get your face on somebody. We just got to be more aggressive. I've never seen you guys play this song. Know your assignment and get your going. You want to win this football game? You got to start making more plays than them. You got to make the play. Break down, keep your eyes up, swarm on defense, and block extra on offense. That's what's going to take to win this fourth quarter. Let's, Let's go. go. Win on three. Win on three. One, two, three. Win! 413 left in the game. Fourth and 10 from their own 13 yard line. Lampkin back to pass. In a little trouble. Got a great block from Vince Pony. And now Lampkin scrambles for the first down across the 23 yard line. Sarah still alive. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Lampkin back to pass, has time. Going over the middle to Terrence LaVille. Nice leaping grab and a first down for Sarah. Lampkin looking left, throws high, and what a catch by LaVille. A one-handed grab. What a play by Terrence LaVille. Lampkin again looking for LaVille, hits him in stride. LaVille has the first down and more close to the 20-yard line. A gain of 23 and a first down for Sarah. 120 in the game. Lampkin throwing left to the end zone. Touchdown, Terrence LaVille. And Sarah is with an extra point of tying the game. What a drive by the Padres. 14 plays, 97 yards, and they're within one. This for the tie. Good snap, good hold, and they ran into the kicker. Damon Lewis goes down. That's going to be a penalty. Let's see what Sarah decides to do now. There's a penalty on the kick. And I'm over here thinking, like, dude, we should just go for it. Like, why not? We're, we're already at two. Raider power right wide. Raider power right wide. You're going to double 55. So the Padres are going for it here. They've outplayed the Wildcats in the second half. Defense certainly did its job holding SI to two scores. That's the average number of points they've given up in the first nine games of the season. We got nothing to lose right now. We're already the league champs, you understand me? We're already the league champs. We got nothing to lose. Hey, I love y'all, man. I love y'all. Love love this has been a great football game. So here we go. Sarah for the win. Here's the snap. Hand off to Sanchez. In the end, he's short by half a yard. UCLA commit Bo Gardner got through the line with just enough push for the stop. The Wildcats will win not just this game, but 
They just broke the WCAL title into three pieces. First win by St. Ignatius against Sarah in 13 years. No perfect regular season record for Sarah, but expect the Padres to be the number one seed in the open division bracket. And who knows, maybe they'll even face the Wildcats again in a couple of weeks for a shot at the section title. To talk about the SI game, you have to talk about the day after the SI game or the Monday after the SI game um, where we sat in here as a team and I wrote on this whiteboard right here, you know, things that they learned from that game. And there was an energy about that game that was different from the previous nine games. We were humbled. We got humbled that game. And we had a constructive team meeting the next day where we talked about what went wrong. Uh, we were cocky. We did jumping jacks in their face. We ran across their logo. And we came out there thinking that we were big dogs. I was, yeah, I was pretty upset, but <laughs> how'd I feel? Um, no, it was a combination of emotions, you know, it was like, it was anger, humility, uh, mainly those two things, because, you know, we didn't get an undefeated season, but, you know, it was, it was a good game to the very end. I mean, y'all saw our offense, you know, that final push, that was amazing. After that loss, it really hit uh, just everything, because we knew we couldn't be that undefeated team anymore. That day was a premier example of a WCL game where we were not only playing a highly motivated WCL football team, but we were also playing ourselves, mentally. Because there was an emotional side to that game that led to the ultimate breakdown of us losing that game. I say we never really moved on from it. It's just, it stuck with us uh, really deep in the hearts, uh, the back of our heads. Um, because to us, that was an embarrassment. You want to talk about history building. Well, now we're 9-0, and we're league champs, and we have a chance to be like something that's never been done in Sarah history. Like the legacy of all legacies, 10-0, and right? Became an underlying theme that I did not do a great job of addressing during the week. Because I don't care about that stuff. <laughs> I didn't, it was never a goal from day one, and I didn't do a good job of identifying the strength and concept of that in week 10, and how this legacy, and oh my God, you're already a great team. We're already a great team. We're nine and oh. Are you guys kidding me? Like we're a great football team, regardless of what happens, so don't play in that sort of fear. Don't play in that sort of like mindset. You know, don't worry about what the fans are saying to you or the coaches or this epic, you know, band that they have and everything was epic. They did a great job. And none of it had anything to do with blocking the right person or, or making the right read or any of that stuff. And that was the story of that game. On top of that, those guys played great. And they played with an, an emotional energy that, um, you know, that, that was too much to overcome by a yard. This year's St. Ignatius team kind of came out of nowhere, but I mean, Teddy Buchanan definitely proved that he was a, an elite athlete, elite player, uh, playing multiple positions for St. Ignatius, including quarterback, but was instrumental in the Wildcats winning a share of the WCAL championship. It was by far St. Ignatius' best season since it won the CCS Open Division Championship in 2012 to beat Sarah in the last regular season game of the season uh, really said a lot about St. Ignatius and what it, you know, what it accomplished uh, last fall. Knowing what I know now, I would not have done that because we didn't get it. And knowing what I know now, I still would have canceled the scrimmage because it made us tougher. <laughs> so both things, you, you know, the strategies sometimes work, sometimes don't. Um, but that was a game that, that I thought I did an awful job of, of coaching the emotion of the team. Like I should have done a way better job of understanding what was going on underneath the surface of a really, really great group of kids and football team. So going into the 2019 playoffs, it was known uh, that the CCS had changed its playoff format for, for football. They put all 40 teams that qualified for the CCS playoffs on a board, and they put the top eight teams in 
Division I, the next eight in Division II, the next eight in Division III, and on down the line. It's a lot of hard work out there, man. We've been putting it out there for months, grinding, sweating, bleeding up for all this stuff, man, all for this one moment. For Sarah, there were going to be no easy games in the playoffs, and they opened up at home against an undefeated Half Moon Bay team that had a terrific season on the coast. On paper, we were the heavy, heavy favorites. We looked at them on film, we went, oh, they're not the biggest guys. Maybe we can, you know, maybe out-technique them instead of just purely outpower them or something, right? But a lot of people saw it as a, as a mismatch given that Sarah was coming from the powerful WCAL. And for anyone who was there, they will never forget the Half Moon Bay performance offensively in the first quarter. say shock but I was, I was surprised and I mean they came out hitting and they came in there they outworked us they had better technique they were lower they blocked lower and they made us work we're on the dive every play we're watching the defense who has been Legendary and Half Moon Bay is just getting little yards, little yards. Not really any big plays, but they're just moving the chains. They keep moving the chains. Like, high school football since the early 1990s. I have never seen a drive like Half Moon Bay put together. 23 plays going essentially the length of the field. I think every time they got the third or fourth down, if I'm remembering correctly, and they just, they just kept getting it. They kept moving the chains and... It was uh, a sight to behold. Could not believe what I was seeing. It was just perfect execution. Short, taking time off the clock short yardage all the way down the field. We had a change of our game plan. We got woken up after that first quarter on defense. Big plays by pretty much everyone. I'd heard so many stories about the last time Sarah had a home game for playoffs. I think they were the one seed and A seed Los Gatos came in and upset them. And that's what I was thinking, I couldn't help it. Other players might say they weren't scared. I was nervous as hell, I was terrified. They got in the end zone like maybe a minute into the second quarter. I'm like, okay, well, we just got to go answer. They took all 12 minutes off the clock and scored a touchdown on the first play of the second quarter. And they led Sarah 7-0 early second quarter. I mean, I was, I was surprised by how much they they're pushing us. I mean, they ain't the biggest dudes, but they they got a lot of heart. So you know, respect to them and all that and all that they did. I think we were down 14-0 with little time left. We threw a ball up. Terrence made a huge catch, and we were able to get a touchdown before half. And that kind of like made the half not as bad as it you would expect it to be. So we went in the half down 14-7. I mean, after we got the initial strike, we are like, oh, okay, you know, this is what we're dealing with. Let's just strategize, and um, that's what we did. We're playing to win this fucking game. How we were in the first half is not how we're going out. We're better than this. We're tougher than this. We're mentally tougher than this. We're physically tougher than this. We need to come out and punch these guys back because we just got punched. And that's okay as long as we punch back. If you don't punch back, you're gonna say, we fucking lost the game because they ran power and played faster than us on defense. And that's not gonna be okay with anybody in here. It's gonna hurt bad. It's gonna hurt bad. Get your eyes right. It's fourth and nine, they were on tight end delay. That's on you guys now. We went over that just one hour ago. 
Execute what we're doing and you'll be fine. You guys gotta trust. I see a lot of shit, a lot of guys' heads down. I'm not going out like that with this team. Not going out like that with this team. Head up, competing our asses off for fucking 24 more minutes. We didn't do all this running and shit to fucking not finish the game. I don't care if we win or lose, I care about our effort. I care about our spirit, the spirit of the team. What makes us who we are, that's what I care about. And I didn't see that team in the first half. I saw that team on their sideline in the first half. Seniors, every one of you invested all that time. It's time to go out there and punch somebody in the face. Two minutes. Seniors, give us a break. Let's get out of here. Let's go. Let's go. Put a third on me. Put a third on three. One, two, three. Put a third. Made a little bit of a struggle, I guess, but you know. We went out there, we trusted our coaches, we trusted each other, and it was over from there. Once we started clicking, they couldn't stop us. Our defense picked it up, and I think what we scored 35 straight, maybe. We beat them, we strategized, and we all good. Padres got their act together, ended up winning the game, uh, you know, using, you know, flexing its muscle in the second half and, and putting away a Half Moon Bay team that had nothing to be ashamed of that day. The performance they put on, um, like I said, anyone who was there will remember it. you describe this win? Uh, it's a grinder's jubilee. You know, that's kind of been our kind of weird tagline all year, but it was a grinder. 100% grinder. Um, not shocked, you know, given the, the element of toughness and community and, and love that I can, I sense from that that team. Coach Holden is just a, a masterful coach and, you know, what, what I, I told Coach Holden before the game, what, what I think about his team from what I've seen and all the research I've done is what I want people to say about Sarah. You know, tough, organized, together, fundamentally sound, great tacklers, you know, they never quit. All these things that I knew uh, we were going to get it was, is kind of what I want people to think about Sarah. So I, I tip my hat to Half Moon Bay Cougars. They remind me so much of what I grew up with. Growing up in Pacifica, everyone in the town knows each other. Everyone grew up with each other playing Pop Warner football. Everyone is uncle and auntie there, and they're a really tight group, um, which I saw in ourselves. Sarah kind of created that family culture too, where all the parents are auntie and uncle, all our parents are friends, and they had a similar kind of lifestyle to the way we played. They weren't showboaters, they didn't wear flashy things, they didn't have flashy players, but they were hard workers. Just a great team, great organization, and I have nothing but respect for Alpha Bay. I think Maurer said it best. They came out here with the, with the intention of, of playing good uh, Half Moon Bay football, and I got nothing but respect for that group of kids, man. You guys that play one way, and all those guys play two ways. The thing about it is, we don't, and we play 48 minutes, and they couldn't. You guys made an epic adjustments to coaching half the second in the second half. Your effort and attitude in the second half was, it was like two different teams. The problem is, we can't be two different teams anymore. Train for it, talk about it, we live it, and that's what you did today. I love this team, and I'm very, very grateful and honored that you guys laid it out there, put it on the line so we can experience another week together in this journey. Father Joe. So, brother, in prayer, our Father. Lord, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we not to the issue, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen.
my final guest this week is from the Serra Padres. Please welcome junior defensive end and tight end Christian Pedersen. Thank you so much for coming out here, Christian. Thanks for having me. Tell us what is working so well with this team. You know, big difference between last year's team and this year's team. I mean, we worked really hard for this, and like we're all really bonded together. Like I've never been a part of a team like this. Like where we're all so tight and close, and I mean, we worked we worked all summer for this on the track. In the, in the gym, I mean, we, we really earned this. We all eat in! And let's talk a little bit about you. What do you want to be when you grow up? Dream is to, you know, hopefully make it to the NFL one day. There's a Padre standard and, you know, you got to live up to that. There's a lot of grace that came through Sarah. And, you know, you use them as motivation. Like, I can do this. Like, if they can do it, I can do it. Okay, offensively, we're going to throw the football. I'm not afraid of fake punt. We're going to throw the ball to Pedersen on Rodeo Pet. But you gotta hold the gap so Damon can have time to throw it. Do not be surprised and execute what we do. So our producer says that you are the secret weapon on offense. I mean, you can call it that, but I mean, I do whatever uh, I'm asked to do, but right now that's mostly blocking and kicking out the DNs and uh, putting the fear of God in my opponents. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm waiting for when my time's called. I mean, I've caught a few passes this year. But that's because we have so much weapons like Ta uh, Nate, Terrence, Dalen. I mean, they've been going off this year, and I'm just, you know, I'm just waiting for my moment. Mm -hmm. And you're a junior, so recruiting is still, you know, in full swing. Yeah. Yeah. How, how has the recruiting process been for you? Uh, it's been pretty good. Um, started off kind of slow, but recently I've had a few schools reach out to me, and I, I just want a school where, you know, they give me an opportunity to play with good academics, great coaches, coaches that love me, and, you know, a place where I can make my name. Hello, GSF University. It's Saturday, the 23rd of November, here at the Brady Family Stadium on the campus of Sarah High School in San Mateo. The number one seeded Padres are set to take on the number four seed, the Wilcox Chargers. Last year, CIF Division 3A NorCal and state champions. The winner of this game will advance to the CCS D1 Finals against the Valley Christian Warriors. VC, as you all know, finished the regular season as co-champs with Sarah and St. Ignatius in the West Catholic Athletic League. Thanks to St. Ignatius, who edged out Sarah in the season finale 14-13. The Warriors eliminated the Wildcats 28-7 last night to advance in the finals. And we're pretty sure they're in favor of a rematch against the Padres for the championship. But we'll find out in just about three hours who their opponent will be. DCS Division I semifinals, Padres, Chargers, coming right up. Coming into playoffs, our strength of schedule is so high. I mean, in preseason, everything we beat was, won their league. And just the WCL, it really is one of the most talented uh, high school football divisions in California and so it was kind of just it was always a tough game no game is ever easy in the WCAO after that uh, win over Half Moon Bay in the first round of the CCS Division One playoffs Sarah returned to its home field for a second round game against a Wilcox team that had beaten Menlo Atherton in overtime the previous week uh, featured a star studded running back in Paul M. Rosa, who had a, a brilliant career at Wilcox. Just three hours, about three hours on that clock. The plan is to empty the tank for three hours, one play at a time. Leave everything on the field for one another. We play this game for one another. We love each other. Go out there, do what you've been taught to do. Keep your eyes up. Do not engage in any shit talk at all with the other team. I love each and every one of you. I love this week that we've had together. Three hours, un empty the tank. Okay. After hearing about Wilcox's crazy game with MA um, in the first round of the playoffs, we, we knew they were legit. Um, we looked at their film, they had big guys, they had a big O-line, they had a good team. Two similar games back-to-back -back of run-dominant teams, assignment-based football, and basically kind of that St. Francis theme of like, this is what we do, are you good enough to stop it? They had a big run, I remember their second play. They ran a trap and the running back ran down for 60 yards. Both of those games, um, Half Moon Bay and Wilcox, came down to you know assignment football, but also physical and emotional toughness. 
which is what has been our theme the entire year at that point. Listen, we are 12 minutes away. We won the third quarter. Now you're gearing into overtime right now. We need a championship drive right now. You feel me? And finally, in between the third and fourth quarter, you told your team, let's play championship football. What did you mean by that? Well, I mean, we've been conditioning hard for a long time, and, and I think we've spent a lot of time and energy and that kind of spiritual work on the duration of the season. And I was kind of just at the point where it's, we've invested so much time and so much energy into this that, you know, it's time to close it out. It's time to come together, fall back on all the fundamentals and things that we believe in and finish the game. And I, we had some nice interceptions there. Nice play by, you know, the bottom of our fire we talk about that keeps the fire lit as uh, Primo had an interception there at the end of the game that, you know, all those things just, just add to the overall culture of the team. So as much as I'm proud of uh, the effort at Hoffman Bay, I'm, I'm equally as proud of being the head coach of Sarah. We watched a lot of film on, on Wilcox. I didn't have the best game against Half Moon Bay, and I told my team during Chapel, it's time, it's time for me to step it up. And Wilcox, I had a little fire under me, and just came ready to go. Wilcox showed up at Sarah, looking to make it to the final one year after falling just short of a CCS title, losing to Menlo Atherton, although in, in that format, Wilcox was able to move on and won a NorCal championship and a state championship in the 2018 season. But in 2019, in a, uh, in a winner-take-all semifinal against Sarah, uh, Sarah proved to be too strong, uh, beating Wilcox to advance to the CCS Division I championship game against Valley Christian. Went back to the old open division, so the first place team isn't that far away from the eighth place team. They slammed all the best teams together in the open division. So I went back to that whole open division philosophy where the eight best teams in the section play regardless of size. And, you know, Half Moon Bay had a brilliant year. I do not think they should have been on the road playing at Sarah in the first round of the playoffs after the season they had. I just, I feel like they got the short end of the stick of that. But they weren't thinking that. <laughs> and they came out with a, you know, like we're, we're we're going to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We're not afraid of you guys. And that actually happened. I'll never forget the turning point of that game, um, you know, besides some, some plays on the field, was my brother, Nicholas Walsh, Coach Eagle, we're over here doing offensive adjustments. My brother over here all of a sudden, and he's a pretty, he's, he's like me, but his fire's like me, but the way he projects, it's different. He's a little bit more chill than me. He, like, went absolutely crazy. You guys got to play better! You understand me? Play better! If you guys want to keep playing the rest of the year, you got to play better. We're trying to make adjustments over there, and he basically made an adjustment to the psyche of the defense. We all got to play better. It's the fucking bottom line. They can do all these fucking adjustments. If we get our ass kicked up front, fucking going home. That's the bottom line. Play better. When I heard that from over there, I'm like, all right, that's that's that, that's good. I like that. That's good. That's what we need it right now, uh, because it's true. I mean, at some point, and that's why we run the track. That's why we do things. At some point, if a man across from you cares more than you or, you know, cares as much as you and says as many prayers as you and drives you off the ball all game, you're going to lose. So that's what was happening in that game. Um, and thankfully, we, we, made, we made that psychological adjustment and, and got back to who we were. And, and you know, I know our sophomore, uh, the missile had a nice play at the end of the game. And, you know, there's just... Uh, some, some positive things that led us to the next week versus Wilcox, which had a similar feel. So you're a sophomore playing varsity football and doing great at it. How does that feel for you? What's it like having the high pressure of being such a young guy on the team? Uh, it feels great. It's not a lot of pressure when we got tons of seniors guiding us through. So yeah, it feels good. And you had two touchdowns today. Yeah, walk me through the first one that you got. Uh, the first one, I just got the ball, saw a hole. I saw there's two guys on the ground just jumped in Enzo. What about the second one? Late in the fourth quarter? I uh, saw my, my three lead blockers blocking great, and I saw the hole and took it and took off. Wear them out, man. That's our event. That's what we do in the third quarter, right? No one scores on us in the third quarter, period. I want to play a hard time with everything we got. We are getting beat on KO and KLR right now, and that's not a Padre team. Jump, jump. Shoot. To win the third quarter on special teams. Yes, sir. Track test. We do that for a reason. For this moment. Hey, no points. First try. That's it. Shut them down. Get the ball back. Get it forced to turnover. Offense goes in. We're like half moon base. Just rolling. All right? Let's go, man. Now, listen. It's week 12 for both teams. It's not like it's week one for Wilcox. It's time for us to grind this game out. 
Okay? All the track work, everything that we've been doing is built for the last 24 minutes of the game. It's to sustain the first 24 minutes of the game. But there's going to be 24 minutes of the game for us to finish right now. I need everyone's energy on the sideline through the roof. Run pass ball calls. Everything we're going to go out, we're going to live right now. Let's go live right now. You guys feel me? Let's go. Let's go. I ain't afraid of death. What I'm excited about is living. Let's win the third. Win the third. And that's what we're going to go do in the third quarter. You guys got me? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Padres on third. Go. One, two, three. Go. guys the sideline pretty much the entire game and one thing I saw was a lot of discipline everyone was yelling run pass very in tune with each other can you speak to what the building process is like for that yeah from Terrence to to Nusi to Jackson to Dalen all our captains they're held to the same standard as everyone else on our team uh, obviously there's the best kids on the team and the not so best kids on the team when it comes to the field but every Sarah Padre is treated the same here and held to the same standard same amount of workouts are expected to be made have to make track time certain amount of lifting things in the in the weight room and I think our coaching staff did a better job of holding them accountable to it. So what, what you saw there on the sideline is a lot of sacrifice and a lot of hours put into something that was important. Don't ever let a bad play get you down. It's hard these days to get high school kids in the Bay Area to care about something other than all the distractions that are out there for the kids. And this team really, really, really cares about BM Padres. They care about each other. Padres have a first and ten. You're 12 minutes away from eating turkey and playing football on Thanksgiving. That's important. That means something. It's important. I want you to do it. We got to go out and earn it, though. They're not going to give it to us. I need a great stand right now. It's time to win the fourth quarter. All that running we do is for this moment. Let's go, Padres on three. One, two, three. Padres. Coming into it. I know some people were picking us because, you know, Wilcox is a public school, we're in the WCAO, but they came out there, they gave it everything they got, and they put up a great fight. This game wasn't overhyped at all. This is, I mean, it's probably the best running team we've played all year, man. These guys really came out to play this today. They were a good team, a very good team. They fought real hard, you know, did everything they could do. Two is a hell of a player. I mean, we definitely put a lot of thought into stopping him, considering he's probably their best athlete on the field. And since 2017, when we won state, I was up here as a sophomore, and I was just watching from the sidelines. and. Two years later to actually get to experience playing in the CCS championship game, playing for a ring, it, it means everything to me. Hey, listen, it's great when a, when a plan comes together the way it did. This plan was, uh, was hatched many, many, many months ago. Many months ago. Actually, before the calendar flipped over to 2019. This plan, this plan was hatched. And I'm very, very proud that all of you bought in. You guys, you guys took a leap of faith. You guys took a leap of faith on what this program's all about. <laughs> You guys made a commitment to the journey. You worked really, really hard. You've done a lot of great things. you sacrificed a lot. All the things that you walk in the path of a spiritual warrior, it's nice when those plans come together. And now we're in the big dance here this weekend. Okay, we're in the big dance. Proxing on Thanksgiving. So we have a wonderful day. I'm sure the parents are going to be coming out strong. Alumni come back. It's just a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to play football. Enjoy it. Okay, yeah, enjoy it. Enjoy this victory. Obviously, we got a really tough opponent uh, in Valley Christian, another WCL foe that we had a war with, and I'm anticipating another just crazy battle. But I love each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. Coaches, I love the coaches so much. But uh, this is what high school football is all about. Talked about it in chapel yesterday about this is the most, this is, will be one of the most memorable and important times of your life. It is a fact. You will never, ever, ever forget the season of 2019. We've talked a lot about how we got here. Now we're going to start thinking about how we're going to finish. <clears throat> and that memory we're going to have to finish. And it's going to be a grinder's jubilee next Friday or Saturday. It's going to be a grind. So I want you to prep your mind. I want you to be happy. It's very, very hard to win CCS championship games. But I want you guys to put it on the shelf and get back ready to work on Monday. Okay? Let's go get another banner, huh? Sir. Sure. Sure.
Joe. Take it away, man. Love you, Coach. Let's go to Padre. Take another Thanksgiving. It's our brotherhood prayer. Our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Sing it in front of Sarah. Pray for us. Pray for us. Pray for us. Practice on Thanksgiving is one of the greatest moments. Because you get to wake up early, go to practice, and spend Thanksgiving with your first family, with your football family. Hey man, happy Thanksgiving man. <laughs> Nothing better. And then you get to go home, watch a little NFL football, and spend Thanksgiving with your other family. Tighten down a little bit, uh, Bruno, tighten down. There you go. Go! Take him! Hit him! Oh, he's gone! My dad's been coaching at Sarah for over 30 years now, and uh, you know, I always love Sarah. I've always been a part of it, so I always wanted to come back and help out. Sit, go! Catch up! So after JV season was done, I offered to help out with varsity, and there's only two Sarah, like three Sarah alumni here. P does is still the man here, so I love and respect that guy, so I always wanted to come back and help out in any way I can. Cool. Oh, I'm at QB today too. Uh, it was uh, a pretty misty day. I remember that day. We invite family to come to that practice, and uh, we have food afterwards and stuff. It's a way of saying Thanksgiving with our family, spread out to the Sarah community and our big family on the football team. So this is sausage, bacon, sandwiches, bear claw, bagels, donuts, coffee, 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 wraps, scones. Dig in. Oh, brownies! Don't forget the brownies. This is what we do because we've been fortunate enough to be here so many years. This is our tradition. I'll wear the sweater one time in the summertime. And it's it's to create a kind of a vision that hopefully, if we're practicing on this day, things are going well. Happy Thanksgiving. Here we go. Three, eight, down. Here we go. A lot of your players seem to really have a good connection with the entire coaching staff. Talk about your coaching staff this year and the great work they've done with the kids. Coaching staff wise, we couldn't have put together a better group of human beings. In 2017, we had an epic season, you know, state championship, and then shortly thereafter, we lost some really key coaches to other programs and it's tough to live in the Bay Area. So I think one of the most remarkable things about this year was the concept of could we ever do it again? You know, with all the changes, new players, new coaches, new everything on some level, where we had some growing pains in 2018. The coaching staff that came together this year in 2019 um, with Darius Bell as our offensive coordinator. He still scored 24 points, but that's not our standard. Uh, Coach Steven Monsef is our defensive coordinator. They haven't shown us anything we haven't practiced, right? It's all zone slice, power read. Uh, Coach Ortiz, you know, doing our special teams, our special teams coordinator. Stay disciplined, okay? Brian Wilbur on the offensive line. First time uh, in the years I've ever been at Sarah where I gave up the offensive line to someone else, which was really hard for me to do. But gosh, he did a great job, just connected with the kids. Once we get that ball, once our offense scores, then you guys go full throttle. Jeff Thomas, our linebackers. There you go, backers! Woo! Coach Eagle, my brother, Nicholas Walsh. Finish it! One to the right, one to the right. We did the defensive line, and we kind of teamed up on that together. I was kind of jumping back and forth with the lines. Coach McGee has been with me basically since day one of the Sarah Padre football, as you know it. Once again, did an awesome job with our safeties. Uh, he's just one of the hardest positions to coach on the field, but I think we have one of our best coaches there. Uh, super reliable, amazing human being. Come on, brotherhood on three, brotherhood on three. One, two, three. Oh! It's a funny coaching staff, but at the same time, uh, we know what business, uh, when business is business, and uh, we have Coach Bell on offensive side, and uh, he's always personally pushing me to do something I can do better. Good first half. I want to be perfect next half. Ringo, Ringo, Ringo. Coach Walsh, that is, he, he is an entity, that's for sure. I mean, I honestly think he's a man amongst men. So, uh, my second year on Vars, uh, <laughs> second year on Vars, um, I mean, all, all I've learned so much from my coaches. They've been so patient with me all last year, uh, getting better this year, getting off the ball, getting faster over the summer, all that work we put in. 
really pays off in moments like this. Like I said with Coach Eagle, little man, big heart, he's probably going to get in my ass for saying that. But, he, you know, he he is a unique character. Whatever Coach Walsh wears, you going to have to agree with that. You can't disagree with Coach Walsh, all right? He, he has a way of just, you know, controlling the situation, which is just amazing. He's a great man, a great figure to look up to. I mean, I'm just thankful he's my coach. You can't spill it, but D-line wise, it's a great job. If we do that, they'll get out of the shoot. Coach right. Montsef was a genius. He knew plays before they even ran them. He was just that much ahead of the game. He made it fun to play football because he made it a game within a game. Let's go. Let's go. He would break down film, find nuances, find the little things about an offense. Uh, he would find tips and tricks of the O-line, uh, quarterback hand signals. He knew the game down to a T. No one knows more about football, in my opinion, and offenses in general, than Coach Motsef, just because he's a smart dude. Finish your run, ball security, we're gonna get outside on these guys. One cut, let's go. Coach Ortiz is the funniest coach. Even since last year, that's just been my dog. Like, I always hang around him. He's probably the most loving coach. Uh, you know, he loves all of us and what we do. There you go, Mijo! He just lights up a room whenever he walks in. Like, you, if he walks in right now, I'll just be, Coach T! Keep it up, T! We got you! Keep it up, T! Here you go, Mike. Start, go! Jeff Thomas is our linebacker position group coach. Always brings great energy to game day. Great energy to the weight room, great energy to conditioning, wherever it may be, even in the classrooms. He always keeps it straight, you know, all about business, but he'll always have a joking side to him, which you gotta love. If I ever saw a Jay DN with a lime green, I'll be like, what's up with it? What's up with it? What's up with it? Coach McGee, search it up right now. Jeff? Be even with your feet. They're all jacked up with that right foot. You gotta take the time to trust your coaches, trust what they're teaching, and use it in game because their knowledge is very helpful and it will get you through a lot of scenarios. All I'm gonna say is though, shout out to our coaches, man. Those guys really adjust us, uh, do the best we can. Uh, I really appreciate them, especially in those tight situations when they can make adjustments on the fly, we can execute and make big plays. Playing Valley Christian the second time, they felt robbed. There was a lot of talk after our win against Valley, you know. I know they thought that like, they got played a little bit maybe in our first game and that, you know, they, it just wasn't them, but we came out seeing day, man, we balled. Simple as that. It was a, a defensive day of just seeing, you know, scores low, shut them out. They got a four-wheel drive offense, but we are who we are. You know, if we uh, allow the weather to dictate that we're just going to run the football, that plays right into Valley Christian's hand. That's what they're great at, is stopping the run. So hopefully, you know, the weather will hold off. Valley runs the football, so, you know, a rainy, wet, slippery game would put the advantage on the heavy running team, which is what Valley does. So no matter what, we have to hope we have to control and hold the football and not turn the ball over. You know what the best part is, though, seriously? Is practicing on Thanksgiving because you're out here, you're with this one family here, and then you get to go be, be with your other family, and that's the best part. It's something that we put in our mind, we want to practice on Thanksgiving, it means you're playing for the CCS championship, a great celebration of, of family and, and just relationships, which is what Thanksgiving's all about. So. And the kids are amped up, and we're all amped up, so that's the best part. We say the only better than practicing on Thanksgiving is practicing next Thursday, So, but it's going to be a hard game Saturday night.